if you have charges like electrons, 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 with a force which is enormous. Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Lab, where it's my job to help you through your engineering courses. In this video, I'm going to look at capacitance, and specifically the relationship between the current through and the voltage across a capacitor. The first thing that I want to do is consider some qualitative aspects of current and voltage of capacitors in DC circuits. So what we're looking at here is a simulation from FET from the University of Colorado in Boulder. And specifically, this is the AC circuit construction kit. And I'm using the AC kit because the DC kit currently doesn't have capacitors in it. And I want to use this because this, is, this simulation will give us a good idea what the relationship between voltage and current is um, qualitatively. And there are four things that I want to, I want you to consider when you're thinking about the relationship between voltage and current in a capacitor. So what we have here in the simulation is we have a voltage source over here and it is 50 volts. Over on the other side, we have a capacitor that's going to charge. We also have a resistor in this circuit. And the reason we have a resistor there is because that's going to limit the amount of current that can flow. And then we also have an ammeter to show us what the current is and a voltmeter to show us what the voltage across the capacitor is. We also have this voltmeter over here measuring the voltage across the battery. It's going to be a constant 50 volts. I just wanted to show you that it is actually 50 volts. Okay, the first thing to consider is that current only lasts long enough for the capacitor to charge. And to see that, I'm going to close the switch and what we're going to see is the current start to flow. You'll see the electrons flowing onto the bottom plate and then away from the top plate and charge builds up. And charge builds up over time. And you can see that once the capacitor is full, current stops. The second thing to consider is that current is due solely to charge moving onto the plates. Electrons move onto the bottom plate, causing a buildup of negative charge, and push electrons away from the top plate, causing a buildup of positive charge. There's actually no current that's flowing between those two plates. Current coming into the plates builds up the negative charge and current coming out of the plates is the electrons flowing away from the plates. Those electrons were already on that top plate. No current flows between the plates. Okay, I'll open up the circuit and discharge this capacitor to see the third thing. And the third, the third thing that I want you to think about with voltage and current in capacitors is that as the charge is deposited, voltage on the capacitor builds up over time. So I close that circuit and you can see the voltage is building up over time. And how quickly that voltage builds up depends on the current and it depends on the size of the capacitor. The higher the current, the faster the charges get deposited. And the larger the capacitor, the more space there is for charges to build up. So it will take longer for the voltage to build up to the maximum. And you can see in this case, the maximum is 50 volts and then everything stops. The fourth thing to consider, which you probably noticed, is that as the voltage across the capacitor builds up, the current starts to slow. So you can see voltage is building up and current is dropping. That's because it gets harder and harder to push those charges onto the plates as you have more and more charges on the plates already. The difference between the source voltage and the voltage across the capacitor is another indicator that can help you understand why the current slows down. If the voltage difference between the source and the, and the capacitor is small, there's going to be less push to get all the charges onto the plate. So the current is going to start to slow down. Now that you have an idea, a qualitative idea of the relationship between voltage and current in capacitors, let's take a closer look at the quantitative relationship between voltage and current. So let's go back to the beginning of what a capacitance is, or what capacitance is, and that relationship between charge on the capacitor and voltage across it. And this is going back to kind of the definition of what capacitance is. A charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. We can rearrange this equation and look at it from a number of different points of view. But this is, this is how I want to look at it today. Now this is going to apply at any particular instant in time. When you have voltage across a capacitor, you're going to have a certain amount of charge on it determined by that equation. What about when you have a varying amount of charge? So like when, when a capacitor is being charged from the beginning. Well, when you have things that are changing over time, we usually use a lowercase notation for that. So we could say something like this. Lowercase q is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage across it. And even more accurately, or in, in better format, we could say that the changing charge over time is equal to the capacitance times 
the changing voltage over time. Now, if we take the derivative of both sides of these equations with respect to time, I'm gonna drop this T here. And actually, I should maybe put a little subscript C here to, be, to, to designate voltage across the capacitor. So we're taking the time derivative of the charge on the left-hand side of the equation, and then the time derivative of capacitance times voltage on the other side of the equation. The capacitance is a constant, so we can actually bring it outside the derivative. So what we get is dq dt, so that's the rate of change of the charge over time, is equal to the capacitance times dvc dt, or the rate of change of the voltage over time. Now what's this term here? The rate of change of charge over time. That sounds kind of familiar. That's going to be the current through the capacitor. So current through the capacitor is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor. And this right here is the fundamental equation relating current through and voltage across a capacitor. You can see that it's a lot more complicated than Ohm's law, but that's okay. We've got a mathematical expression and we can now use this as a fairly powerful tool to be able to do all sorts of analysis on capacitors, whether that's in a DC circuit, with a transient, when we've got opening, changing voltages across a capacitor, or whether it's in an AC circuit where it's an on, ongoing voltage change across a capacitor. And if we're dealing with conventional current and we have a capacitor here, how does this relate to the voltage polarity for the capacitor? Well, if we have conventional current IC that's going in this direction, remember conventional current's going to be a carrying of positive charges. So if we've got co positive charges coming into the positive, the top plate, we're gonna have a buildup of positive charge here, buildup of negative charge on the bottom. So that means when we have current coming into the capacitor that way, the voltage across the capacitor is going to look like that. It's gonna have that polarity. The current will have this magnitude, but it will be in, in this particular direction. Going back to the animation, you can see that the voltage is changing, which according to this equation we've just determined means that we're going to have some non-zero amount of current, and you can see that here in the, in the animation. And in another one of my capacitor videos, we'll determine the exact relationship between voltage and current for circuits like this one, where we have resistor and capacitor and a switch that opens and closes. But for now, to develop a better understanding of this, of this equation here, IC equals C dV C dT. Let's look at a, a simpler example. So given a voltage, VC of T, that changes like this, we can use our equation here to figure out what the current is. And the reason I've got it drawn like this is just to give you an idea of, of how to use this equation. But we have very simple rates of change for the voltage, so it's pretty easy to figure out what the current is. So what I want for that same time frame is a graph of current. And let's look at, at some individual time blocks. We'll go from zero to 10 milliseconds, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and then 30 to 50. Because for each one of those blocks, the rate of change of the voltage is the same. Okay, so for this time frame from zero to 10 milliseconds, the voltage is changing from zero to 20 in a linear fashion. So that rate of change of dvc dt is going to be 20 volts in 0 0.01 seconds, 2,000 volts per second. Now to figure out IC, we have to remember this equation. So one thing that we do need to know in order to figure out what IC is, what it is, what is the capacitance? So let's say for this system, we have a capacitance that is one microfarad. So, so that current is going to be one microfarad times the rate of change of the voltage. And so for the first step, it's 2000 volts per second. And that works out to two milliamps. So for that time frame from zero to 10, 10 milliseconds, the current is going to be two milliamps. Now from 10 to 20, 10 to 20 milliseconds, the voltage is constant. So the rate of change of the voltage is zero, which means that the current is also zero. 
Then from this period from 20 to 30 milliseconds, look, it's going from 20 volts down to minus 20 volts. So it's changing. The voltage change is minus 40 volts in 0 0.01 seconds. That is 4,000 volts per second. So we plug 4,000 volts per second into that equation, and we get 4 milliamps. Actually, it's going negative. So it's negative 4,000 volts per second and negative 4 milliamps. And then finally, from this time frame from 30 to 50 milliseconds, that's a time span of 20 milliseconds, and it is changing plus 20 volts. So that's 20 volts per 0.02 seconds is 1,000 volts per second. Plug that into the equation here, and we get 1 milliamp. Now, if I was to plot this out, oh, well, I'm going to need some scale here. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4 milliamps. And negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So from 0 to 10, it's 2 milliamps. And then from 10 to 20, it's 0 milliamps. And then from 20 to 30, it's minus 4 milliamps. So it's going to jump down to minus 4 milliamps. And then from 30 to 50, it's 1 milliamp. And then who knows what happens after 50 milliseconds. Now, this is kind of a strange situation because you're really only going to get a relationship that looks something like this for voltage and current across a capacitor if you had a circuit that looks something like this, where you have a variable voltage source and some amount of capacitor. So you can adjust that current. I said voltage, didn't I? That should be current source. You've got a variable voltage. Ah, I said it again. Can't get past that. You have a variable current source did it. A variable current source that you can adjust to these different values that will give you the voltage profiles that looks like this. So you adjust it at 2 milliamps, you're going to get a ramping of the voltage up like that. Dial it down to minus 4 milliamps, and you're going to get a voltage profile that looks, that looks like that. More often, you'll have circuits that look like this, where you have a voltage source, and you have a resistor and a capacitor some kind of load in a capacitor, and you want to find out what the relationship is between the voltage source, the current it creates, and the voltage across and the current through the capacitor. And we'll save the analysis of this kind of circuit for some later RC circuit videos. But until then, keep learning and have fun. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.